Complex congenital anomalies refer to a group of heart defects present at birth. There are many complex cardiac abnormalities. A normal heart is divided into two sides, left and right, separated by a wall with a no gap or hole in it, and on each side there are two compartments, an upper and lower compartment. The upper compartments are known as atria, which receive blood. The blood is then passed to the lower compartments, known as ventricles, which then pump it out. The blood from the right ventricle goes to the lung, where oxygen is added and carbon dioxide is removed. This blood comes back through the left atrium into the left ventricle, which then pumps it to the rest of the body, where oxygen is used. Walls control the flow of the blood into and out of the ventricles. There are two walls on each side of the heart. These walls make sure that the blood moves forward and not backward, especially between the contractions. The wall between right atrium and right ventricle is called tricuspid wall. The wall between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery, which is the blood vessel taking blood to the lungs, is called pulmonary. The wall at at the entrance of the aorta, which is the blood vessel, taking blood to the body is called aortic wall. After understanding the normal heart anatomy, it's easy to understand the different types of congenital fetal anomalies which occur at different levels in the heart. Those congenital anomalies include atrial septal defect, tetrid fallow or tetralogy of valid, ventricular septal defect, and aortic coarctation. Here we can see the aortic stenosis, a type of cardiac anomaly. This is the ventricular septal defect, a defect between the two ventricles. Above ventricular septal defect, here we can see the pulmonary stenosis. Every cardiac abnormality should be confirmed by an echo, preferably by a pediatric cardiologist or fetal medicine consultant, followed by karyotyping to exclude chromosomal abnormality. Abnormalities that are not compatible with the life, such as hypoplastic right heart, should be managed jointly with clinical geneticist, pediatrician, pediatric cardiologist, and the counselors. Now, what tests are offered when we suspect the cardiac anomalies in the fetus. The cause is unknown in most of the cases. Because of the associated chromosomal problems, pregnant woman is advised the amniocentesis, a test to check the baby's chromosomes. Can fetal cardiac anomaly happen again? The population risk for congenital heart disease is about 1%. The risk of recurrence is greater in the next pregnancy. In previously one affected child, the recurrence risk is between 2 to 5 percent. In case of previous two affected children, the recurrence risk is 10 to 15 percent. How is pregnancy managed? The pregnancy continues as normal, but the baby is monitored with a regular ultrasound scans looking for the complications that may arise as a result of cardiac abnormality. One of the complications include fetal growth restriction. How is the baby delivered with congenital heart disease? Most babies will tolerate labor and delivery without any problems. There is no need to do cesarean section for a baby with congenital heart disease. The baby with congenital heart disease should be seen by neonatologist immediately after birth. Now, the symptoms of congenital heart disease in the newborn depend on the type and severity of the cardiac problem. In such cases, the baby is usually not growing or gaining weight properly. There is either rapid breathing or difficulty in breathing. Baby becomes tired easily and there is decreased blood milk intake, uh, breast milk in intake due to becoming tired easily. Other signs and symptoms include excessive sweating, fatigue, rapid heartbeat, bluish tint of the skin, lips, fingernails and inner lining of the mouth in a condition called cyanosis. Children with mild congenital heart disease may show mild symptoms or no symptoms at all. So thank you so much. That was all about congenital cardiac anomalies. Subscribe on Obsangaini. Allah Hafiz.